Welcome back to the I'm Nerd Podcast, guys. I'm your host, Freyway, and I'm here with my co-host, Kenny. And today, we will be discussing mm. a myriad of topics. We have listener letters. We have uh, the announcements from San Diego Comic-Con related to the MCU and the roadmap that they presented for us about the next couple years of what's going to be happening. And yeah, just like a general discussion episode, there was also a new trailer, an extended version of the trailer for House of Dragon, which is now officially coming out August 21st. Uh, speak about that a little bit later in the episode and yeah so let's just jump right into it uh so comic-con was last week and they announced a lot of things that got people pretty excited for the mcu uh quantumania is coming out in 2023 in february ant-man and the wasp 3 i'm actually kind of excited for this movie because first of all as as everyone knows ant-man and the wasp otherwise known as ant-man 2 is tied with the second Thor movie for being the worst fucking Marvel movie ever made. Potentially <laughs> the worst movie ever made. Um, those movies are terrible. But typically you'd be like, well, if the first two... Well, the first one's okay, but the second one sucks. Why would you be excited for the third one? The only reason I'm excited for the third one is because we know... Now we know for a fact after Comic-Con that Kang the Conqueror is in this movie. Um, yes, and he's apparently a really big deal as far as this movie's yeah. concerned. The Quantum Mania movie. So that that combined with the fact that we know Loki season two is coming out in uh I don't know soon. I forget the exact date, but we know Loki season two is coming out. It's already in filming. And then we also know that like they showed like fucking the end of phase six where they sh- it was like Avengers Secret Wars and Avengers Kang Dynasty or something like that. Kang, yeah. So Anyway, this movie, I'm really this Ant Man and the Wasp movie, I'm really excited for. Hopefully, they really pulled their shit together and they don't have the trappings and failings of that second one. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the Ant Man movies, to be honest. Uh, I'm just, I don't know. The side heroes, they just don't do it for me. It's always the main ones that I like. So the Iron Mans, the Hawks, Thor, uh, you know, those guys, yeah. the main ones, the main Avengers. But all of the side guys just kind of, like, eh, whatever. I don't even care for the Guardians of the Galaxy, if I'm being completely honest. Like, I don't really care for those movies. I think the second one was pretty shite. Uh, there's a third one coming out, though, that's supposed to wrap up the storyline. It's like a trilogy for them. And yeah. it really focuses on Rocket Raccoon, which I do like his character. I think he's hilarious in everything he's in. So I'm a little bit more intrigued about that movie than the other Guardians yeah. of the Galaxies that have already come out that I'll pretty much never watch again unless again I, if I'm showing someone every MCU movie for some reason like I'm dating and they never saw a single Marvel movie for whatever yeah, reason yeah that's the only way I'd yeah. watch any of those again but I um yeah I like the Guardians movies so I am excited for three like I said Ant-Man and the Wasp it's really just Kang that's selling it like if it wasn't for Kang the Conqueror I would probably wouldn't care yeah the fact that he's in the movie I'm like all right well I'm interested. Yeah, the Kang storyline that ended off Loki, which is part of the reason why I think Loki was the best of all the Marvel shows so far. Uh, and I haven't seen Miss Marvel. That's the that's the one we have to watch next, I guess. I, I already seen, and I gotta watch Moon Knight. I haven't seen Moon Knight. I watched all of Moon Knight in a day, and it's okay. And we could do a whole podcast episode on that one. Uh, and then Miss Marvel, I haven't started. I didn't think that Miss Marvel was going to be good, but uh, people like it. I guess I've been seeing stuff about it I've, on Facebook. I've heard good things. I haven't seen it, but I've heard good things. Yeah. It, you know what it is? Every one of the Marvel shows, they get to a point where there's just some crazy big reveal or some crazy part of it that yeah. kind of ties into the entire MCU that's outside yeah. of just its own story. And so that's, regardless of whether or not it's good, people are going to get hyped for that. Yeah. It's always something like that. So I think something happened to Miss Marvel that is like oh, an overarching point for the entire MCU that's not necessarily related to just Miss Marvel to show. And yeah. that's like how Kang the Conqueror, right? Is It came out of Loki. It, it's completely independent of Loki now. Like he is going to be one of the biggest threats. Uh, I was actually surprised though, because I thought that Kang the Conqueror might end up being a red herring and that he would not be the ultimate villain in all of this. Uh, I thought I thought that it, they might reveal Galactus or Doctor Doom, especially knowing that the Fantastic Four is coming out. I mean, who knows, though? Like, that might still have... Like, it might still be setting up for that kind of red herring. The last one is called Avengers Secret Wars. I think that's after the Kang Dynasty. Both of them are coming out in 2025, so there's there's nowhere near... They're they're doing, but it's interesting, though. The fact that they revealed them like that, 
they're trying like they're doing the end game yes infinity, infinity war, war thing again yeah and they're both coming out so one's coming out may 2nd the other come is coming out november 5th 2025 so at least if that's when i'm reading this correctly then they're coming out in the same year and the infinity war and endgame didn't even come out in the same year so that's interesting uh but yeah i i don't i don't mind it it's just it's a far ways off and there's a lot in between so we already said quantum mania secret invasion guardians 3 echo which is apparently a spinoff of the um hawkeye show so that's what echo is loki season three like you said summer 2023 uh marvels july 28 2023 blade november 3rd 2023 iron hall iron heart which is the woman version of iron man basically and i think that she might have a cameo in wakanda forever or something like that i don't know cool. yeah i don't know if that was already alluded to but iron heart did you see the trailer for Wakanda Forever? I just watched it, actually, right before this. So, something I found interesting about that trailer was, at least based on the trailer, I didn't feel like there was one main character. Like, it seemed like it really was about, unless I just misunderstood, it just seemed like it was about a lot of the Wakandan characters. Like, well, that's what I... Focus on one. Well, that's what I think. They chose to not name it Black Panther 2. They chose to not name it anything that concerns Black Panther specifically, which is probably yeah. a good idea overall since Chadwick Boseman, uh, rest in peace to him, but he's he's passed away. And there was all of this debate about how to, I guess, continue the legacy of Black Panther. Like, so someone, so someone else uh, pick up the mantle and just play the character, which I was totally here for, but a lot of people didn't like the idea of an, another actor being Black Panther. And I just think that's strange only because there are so many instances of another actor playing a superhero in history. Like it's not, yeah. it's not like I, it, it sucks that he died. Right. But people die, things happen and you have to move on. And I just think that it's ridiculous to say we can never recast the Black Panther character. Um, I, th I think what they're going to do is like just that one died and then they are going to have the Black Panther come back. But yes. It won't, it won't be like this is the same person. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, because cause the, the alternative and basically what I was alluding to is like they recast Chadwick Boseman as some other guy and they pretend like he's always been the black. They yeah, never, yeah. they never even address the fact that Chadwick Boseman is dead. Yeah, yeah. They just kind of like, this is black Panther. He's always been black Panther. And the, the continuity of the story just continues from there. And I know people yeah. would not like that because people just never like recastings, but they, they do happen. Uh, and it's, and, and, and it's just an unfortunate Sometimes circumstance. They happen so funny though. Like in a uh, game of Thrones, like the one game of Thrones, yeah. the one guy, um he's like part of Daenerys's, Daenerys. yes. Like, yeah, yeah. Uh what's his name? The da, um Dario Naharis. Yeah, yeah. Dario Naharis. Like they didn't even try to get somebody that looked that looked similar. No, they just needed a good looking guy because in the novels that guy is supposed to be extremely attractive. The first guy I thought was just kind of I don't know, he did not look attractive at all. He looked very gaunt, like his and his face, it just looked like he has sunken in cheeks, like he drinks a lot or something. I, I'm going on this guy's appearance, but fuck it. Uh, but the second guy, he was cool. Like, he was cool. Yeah. And, yeah, so they do recasting. So I'm used to recasting because I've watched a lot of media in my life, and it's just a part of life, especially if someone passes away. It's unfortunate, but the show must go on. Uh, so, yeah, that's actually coming out. Wakanda Forever is actually coming out this year. I did not expect that. I did not expect an announcement only four months away from the actual film. I mean, it's July right now. It's almost August, actually. And the movie's coming out in November 2022 yeah. of this year. So that was a big shock to me that the movie is completely wrapped up, I guess. Or maybe they're just doing like post-production stuff. And it'll be out in less than four months uh, since August is basically here. So realistically, it's a, a three-month roadmap to Wakanda Forever. And again, like you said, it doesn't seem like it's focusing on, on, on one particular character it's going to be the entire wakanda versus maybe atlanteans or something along those lines because uh, i think the main yeah. villain is namor or they namor. have yeah the submariner in here so yeah so th that's going to be a thing which looks cool i mean i'm going to go see it obviously uh black twitter is going crazy when this first was announced they were saying they're going to do all this stuff they did for the first one like we're african garb and cook and all kinds of crazy stuff i'm just like okay but i personally will just be going to see the movie like i did the first one and hopefully it doesn't have an actor as cringe as michael b jordan because i found him to be absolutely fucking terrible in black panther the original movie i just did not like his acting i thought it was very cringe so we'll see
Uh, also, there's Agatha, Coven of Chaos for winter yes. 2023 into 2024, which <laughs> I like that they put the years that it crosses because that tells me this is going to start in December and go into yeah, 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 January. Yeah, January. You know, yeah so I actually, yeah, yeah. I thought it was funny. We talked about that. We talked about how like, winter... winter like, what does winter mean? Is that the top of the year or the end of the yeah, year? Yeah, winter is the only season that can literally be January or December of the prior year. So, I, you know, when someone says, oh, it's coming out winter 2023, it, that could that could be January 2023 or it could technically be December 2023. It could be either or. So I like that this says 2023 to 2024, so we know it's December so into January. It's the end of 2023. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and then Daredevil, a lot of people are happy about this. Apparently, it's going to be 18 episodes, the same actors from the Netflix show, which yeah, is good. I'm actually really excited for this because I enjoyed the Netflix Daredevil. I never saw, I think there's three seasons. I never saw season three, but I did enjoy the Netflix Daredevil. It was cool. And yeah. like the Netflix Marvel shows in general are cool. I thought the Luke Cage show was really, well, I thought half of it was really good. The half where they had, um, I always butcher the actor's name, but it's like Marshala Ali or something like oh, that. Oh, Mahershala. Dude, he, I fucking love that actor. Yeah, he's, he's won two Oscars in the last five years. That guy's insane. Oh, man. He, he, I fucking love him. Yeah. And he's apparently, unless I misheard the announcement, I think he's, I don't remember which movie, but he's in one of these upcoming Marvel movies as well, I think. He might be Blade. I think he is Blade. I think he he, he is Blade. legit might be Blade. I mean, he's he basically is uh, akin to Wesley Snipes in a lot of ways. He has that same kind of personality and demeanor to him. He's tall, very dark skin, uh, beautiful guy, great actor. Like he just reminds me of a younger version of Wesley Snipes in a lot of ways. So I'm happy that Mahershala Ali may be picking up the blade mantle. And yeah, I, I've enjoyed him in Moonlight, uh, Green Book, and a, a ton of other movies. He's been really working a lot in these last five years. I didn't know of him at all before, like, let's say 2016. And now all of a sudden, I just see this guy in so many roles. And yeah. the roles he that he in, takes uh, are always nominated. He was in House of Cards. He was really good. He in was House in House of Cards, Cards yes. I forgot about that. But yeah, he was actually, he played like a right-hand man almost to uh, Kevin Spacey, like, you know, Kevin Spacey, and he helped him out, and obviously he turned on him at some point, but that's what everybody does in that show. It was the point of it. Yeah. It's like politics. It's never personal. It's just politics. Uh, yeah, so Agatha, Coven of Chaos. I am interested in this because the song Agatha All Along is probably the best song that came out of all of the Marvel shows. I just think that song was so catchy in the way it ended that episode. <laughs> well, I thought your favorite song was I Can Do This All Day. I can do this all day. It's great. The fucking musical, the Broadway play. I want to see that play because it was so cheesy and cringe. But that type of shit is exactly what I like. So I can do this all day because it rhymed so well. And it was like, I don't know. The characters' costumes were so bad. The Hulk being just spray, spray uh, I can't even speak, spray painted green. It was just, it was so bad, but it was good. And I would literally sit there on Broadway and watch that shit. But yes, I do like that song a lot, but I think Act All Along still takes the cake because it's just such a witchy song. It has that yeah. witchy vibe to it. Uh, so we'll see what happens with that. And also I'm, I'm of the belief that Scarlet Witch was killed or killed herself at the end of a multiverse of madness. Uh, some people didn't agree with me when I said that on the podcast episode, but I guess she may still be alive. Maybe Agatha will do something to bring her back to life. I just assume that she killed herself after what she did. I don't think that her, she could be redeemed after what she did either. She killed a lot of people in multiverse of madness. So it's interesting because Agatha is the teacher of Scarlet witch in the comics. She teaches her a lot, you know, they battle, but at the end of the day, that's her that's her teacher. So I just want to know how they're gonna play into that after all that she's done in Multiverse of Madness, if she does come back at all. And honestly, this show is called Agatha, not Scarlet Witch. So maybe it won't even really focus on Scarlet Witch. I don't know. We'll see. Uh Cat 4. That's interesting. Is that real? Captain America? Captain America? Yeah, yeah. Dude, it's fucking it's my man Black America. It's star it's he's in. Oh, he's is, in. is that who it is, really? Yeah, yeah, no, for for real, for real. He's the new Sam Wilson. Um, I forget the name of the actor, but Sam Wilson, previously the Falcon, he is now officially Captain America, and the new Captain America movie is starring him. He's Captain America. He's the star. Wow, I did not know that. Okay, well, I'm definitely going to see that. Obviously, uh, I didn't really care for Falcon and Winter Soldier, but hopefully, the Captain America will be a lot better. I 
the Captain America movies in general are pretty good. Like the second one, Winter yeah. Soldier, and even uh, Civil War, they're pretty good. I just didn't care for the standalone show uh, featuring, you know, James Mackey. Is that some some Ma- Anthony Mackey? I think it's Anthony, Anthony Mackey. Mackey. Anthony yeah, Mackey. There. Anthony Mackey. Yeah, I, I, um, I didn't care for that too much. My favorite line still from that show, Captain and the Captain Falcon, whatever the fuck it is. He's not Captain Falcon. Anyway, um, but my favorite thing is still when he's uh the kid was like, Hey, you're Black Falcon. Yes. He was like, No, I'm just the Falcon. <laughs> I remember that. That is still my favorite. So I'm just I it's not gonna happen. But I would love if somebody tried to call him Black America in the show. Like I just think that would be I mean, mean movie. White America. I, that, would, that would be so funny. Yeah, that'll be uh that'd be interesting. So the the other thing on here is Thunderbolts. And it says this is yeah. for the brand new content crew. All we know so far is that they are a band of reformed supervillains founded by Baron Zemo, who disguised themselves as heroes after the Avengers were killed. So mm-hmm. villains turned good or maybe good. Uh sounds a lot like Suicide Squad, right? Isn't that the premise of Suicide Squad? So it's basically Marvel's yeah. version of that. They're called the Thunderbolts. Yep, yep. Yeah, this is a classic comic series. It's like, yeah, I mean... I know nothing about it. Uh, And in Phase Um, 6... Oh, did you want to speak more on Thunderbolts or what? Yeah, yeah, it just seems that the the girl that's um, from Seinfeld... uh, The girl from Seinfeld who we've been seeing at the end of various movies... Oh, yeah, she was part of the reason why Hawkeye got attacked, right? Yeah, and she got, um... What's his name? Uh... The bad Captain America, the and, and yes. Falcon and the Winter Soldier, I, the punchable yeah. face one. I know exactly who you're talking about. Yeah, she like recruited him at the end, and so she's been recruiting people. And it seems as though that's what this is culminating to. She's recruiting people for the Thunderbolts. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I was wondering what they were doing with her, and she comes out of nowhere almost like magically, and then she just starts talking nonsense, and no one attacks her or anything. Uh, but yeah, so we'll see about that. That's July, 2024 though. So that's a, that's two years away. So phase six, fantastic Four, a reboot of the 2015 film featuring Mr. Fantastic human torch, the thing and invisible woman, all movie adaptations of this classic superhero team have been cursed so far. Can they shake it this time? That is the age old question. Every time I see a fantastic four reboot, I cringe a little bit because this movie has been done so many times. And most of them are terrible. The ratio is really bad now. The first one, I was a kid when I saw it, I think. And I didn't really mind it. Uh, You know, I didn't think it was good or anything. But it was just like, okay, this is cool. And then everything after that has been a absolute dumpster fire. So I am not enthusiastic about seeing another Fantastic Four movie. But I think that there's no way. And this is the coin flip theory, right? In my head, you failed so many. You've landed on tail so many times. You failed. There's no way the next coin flip is going to be. Tails again. You can't fail again. Like that's that's how I'm that's how I feel. Even though the odds are, you know, it could easily fail, but I just feel like there's no way you didn't learn from the last four reboots of the Fantastic Four. So they pretty much all suck. Um, but I will say that last one that has um Michael B. Jordan, yes, it's not worse than Dragon Ball Evolution. I want people to stop. It is bad but it's not worse than Dragon Ball Evolution. I do remember hearing the worse than Dragon Ball Evolution stuff, and that just, that can't be right. It's not true. But anyway, that said, I don't know. I think that all of those movies weren't done by Marvel. They were all done by Sony. So this one being done by Marvel, Marvel has a formula, and they've kind of figured it out by now. So I honestly do think this movie will end up being good, as in, like, as good as all the other Marvel movies. Yeah. Take that however you want it. Um, it might be a, a fucking standout. I probably not. It'll probably just be like a Marvel movie, which means it'll be watchable and fun to watch. But I don't think it'll be bad. Okay. Well, there's that. Uh, also, there was a She-Hulk announcement as well. Attorney at Law. Yeah, it's gonna be a Disney Plus show. I think it is. And uh, I saw that they had the real Hulk. You know, in the in the movie or in the in the show. I. The, the CG doesn't look the greatest right now, uh, but it's not finished. And I mean, what, I, you know, I, I expect that it's going to be a lot of CG because it focuses on the Hulk and a, a, a female version of the Hulk who is seven feet tall. Uh, but I don't really understand anything about this character outside of when she was in Marvel. She's in Marvel 3, I think. Marvel's Capcom yeah. 3. She is. And she fucking, she's got the Reeboks on and she hits you with the drop kick. Yeah. Shit is fire. Yeah, I actually know somebody who mains her. 
uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 3. But that's about all. I don't really know much about her. Uh, but I know one thing. When I was younger, I was told about this this movie or this comic, this comic actually, about World War Hulk. World War Hulk. It's so hard to say that. And I'm wondering at what point does the Hulk go off to a planet, have a family, live in peace, and then somebody fucking kills them, and he snaps and starts killing everybody in MCU. I'm waiting for that. Like, that is, I'm looking forward to that. That storyline happens eventually, man. That would be so tight. Yeah, I've been hearing about this for over 15 years, I feel like, and I really would like to see that shit on the screen. So, uh, because I remember they said that Black Bolt tried to, you know, fight him. And this is, I guess this is going to be a thing with Black Bolt where he just gets dusted. But Black Bolt screams at him, or he... He tries to fight him, and I think the Hulk grabs him up and says, you owe me a scream, or I want to hear you scream, or something crazy like that, and just takes it point blank. Like, he takes a point blank yeah. scream from Black Bolt, and he does nothing to him, and Black Bolt's one of the most powerful characters in MCU, or in, in Marvel, I guess, in general. Uh, he's only been in one MCU movie so far, but but yeah, and he got dusted immediately by Scarlet Witch, so... He really did. Yeah, the real a real waste of that character. So I, I'm again. I don't know if they're going to use him as a prop for the Hulk to just beat up, or if that's going to be a constant thing. How it's kind of how Doctor Strange always loses in the Mirror Dimension. Every time he's used the Mirror Dimension, he is basically lost in it, and it's kind of funny. He just goes in the Mirror Dimension and he gets he gets dusted, just gets fucking ruined. I just remembered. I don't know if we knew, or I don't know if you knew. I didn't know beforehand that there was a Fantastic Four movie coming. But now there's a confirmed Fantastic Four movie coming, and we talked about, I think it was in the Doctor Strange episode, that, oh, it'd be cool because this might mean that we're going to get a Fantastic Four movie. Uh, But it does now raise the question, the Fantastic Four movie we are getting, is that going to be set in the alternate universe, or is that going to be the Fantastic Four in our universe? I would assume, yeah, no, because we saw a different universe's Fantastic Four, and they already killed their Reed Richards. Yeah. So I think it would be ours like in you know base earth base universe uh but uh, then who's the villain if it's not dr doom right who's the villain i'm just wondering where dr doom comes in in all this i just i I just can't imagine fantastic four without dr doom so that for me that's like a big part of the fantastic four lore i don't even know who the other villains are if i'm being completely honest i can't think of them off the top of my head they do they do deal with the scrolls a lot. Okay. The scrolls are like a big part of what's going on right now. Yeah, and that is true. Yeah, Secret Invasion and all that is coming out. Uh what if season two is, is happening? I actually still need to finish season one. So there's that for me. Is oh, you never finished season one? I never I finished season one. I, there's about two or three episodes I just never watched. So I, I need to go them. I need to go back. I heard that they were good too. I heard that they were actually pretty decent because you know that show is an anthology anyway every episode is completely different so some episodes are better than others my favorite one was the one with dr strange i think that episode was fantastic and it also tied into multiverse of madness i feel like that was the same exact strange when he met him in the uh incursion realm or whatever but yeah so that's basically what's going on with the mcu so we have we have black panther or not black we have wakanda forever coming out very soon actually uh and a lot of content they're just going to keep on giving us content which is great. It gives me some reason to use my AMC pass. I pay twenty dollars a month for the AMC A list, and I get to see three movies a week. For I get not free because I pay twenty dollars a month, but like it is kind of so crazy. It is kind of free in a way because you see, one movie is twenty dollars now. I don't know how the pricing of this thing is only twenty bucks, but when you see I, one movie, they are literally twenty. I I only see so I guess maybe because I only see uh movies and Dolby Atmos Dolby Vision. I never see standard definition movies and even standard definition. I feel like it's still 15 bucks, but the movies I see are 20. When I went to go see Dr. Strange with my brother, I fucking spent $50 that day easy and I was not happy about it. Yeah. So I I don't know, but I think the AMC a list, if you are around, uh, AMCs, I, I think it's worth it. I think it's well worth it to subscribe to it. It is something I don't mind paying for. For example, I, I just saw Nope on Saturday, or no, I saw it last Friday, I saw it, nope, and I'm going to go see more movies, you know, in the coming month that will make it worth it, if you just see two, it already, it pays for itself, and this is not an ad, by the way, it just pays for itself if you see two movies, so yeah, all right, moving right along, uh, we are going to, uh, oh, what else? So I was going to say, some for Comic-Con, there's a couple other things that got shown off. Okay, uh, yeah, because this is not just, yeah, I was, we were just kind of doing, like, Kevin Feige's announcement, watched- but... 
Yeah, so real quick, I'll go through a couple things. I don't know if you've seen these trailers, but uh, I'd watched like a, a, a compilation of a bunch of trailers that were shown at Comic-Con in general. Yeah. So the first one was called The End is Nigh, and Nigh spelled like Bill Nye the Science Guy. It's starring Bill Nye. Oh, wow. And it's, it's like six episodes of him explaining different r- realistic end-of-the-world scenarios. And I think the premise is the fact that like there are things that we can do scientifically to avoid them. But whenever scientists try to tell the government about these things, the government just ignores them and then ends up causing them to happen and we all get fucked. Um, so I thought that was a interesting little thing. Um, then they showed, I saw the She-Hulk trailer and then Shazam 2. Going oh, superheroes. yes. I did see that. And The Rock looked fucking beastly in that. Yeah, so here's what's cool. If I'm understanding this correctly, Shazam 2 is its own movie, and then Black Adam. Oh, is its okay, that's what movie. I was thinking about Black Adam. I was, yeah, yeah. yeah, The Rock, I saw the Black Adam trailer, and The Rock just looks so ridiculous. He's just so big, and <laughs> also now he has magic and shit, so he's outrageous, but he threw outrageous. a guy into the sky, and the guy just kept flying upwards. He uh, he tanked the missile point blank. Like, he can do a lot. He, he's, a, he's a lot. So Black Adam, if you don't know, is like Shazam's main villain, um, so I think it's interesting that they're doing a Shazam 2 movie and they're giving Black Adam his own movie. So it seems like they're setting up for for Shazam 3 and him and Black Adam to finally meet. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool and interesting. Yeah. Um, the I Am Groot. Uh, I don't think we talked about it, but the I Am Groot series. It's like a short series. It's coming out on Disney Plus, I think. That's going to be okay. a fucking rant. It's yeah. It might be it funny, though. It might be entertaining, though. I could see that being like... Because he doesn't speak, right? He just says, I am Groot. But I can see it just be him wandering around a city. He ends up in a pub somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, somebody pees on him. You know, because he's, like he's like a little plant or something. Somebody might try to pee on him. And he like, I am like Groot. Dog, like dog pees on him. Yeah, just like little stuff like that. Little funny mishappens of uh, him trying to live his life in a big city. You know? Yeah. So- <laughs> Groot gets an apartment. <laughs> <laughs> you are ranting. <laughs> I Groot- imagine... Groot- Groot somebody's desk plant like in their office. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I just I have so many terrible ideas about this, but they're they're not PG yeah, thirteen. It's gonna be PG thirteen. That comes out uh, August tenth. I think it's a short series on Disney Plus. So I'm guessing the what that means the episodes will only be like five or ten minutes long. Yeah, I think uh, it's gonna be very like quick anthology type vibes, uh, like that Star a, Wars thing. They showed a trailer for John Wick four. Um, Jesus, they're still going wild. I did not know another John Wick movie was coming out. They're still going, huh? And then this I thought was really cool. They showed, they finally showed the, I believe it's coming out on Amazon, Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. Yes. This was announced ages ago, but I swear it was vaporware. Like I just saw nothing of it for forever. Yeah. And uh, I kind of feel like they're riding the coattails of Game of Thrones coming back. Like, no disrespect to Lord of the Rings, but Game of Thrones. So Lord of the Rings paved paved the way for Game of Thrones, right? And then Game of Thrones like kicked the fucking door down, burned yeah. down the castle, like took all the took everything. And and I and now all of a sudden Lord of the Rings is coming back. But I always thought Lord of the Rings was very fucking boring as a kid. And I don't think it's that great, but this looks good. This looks good because it gives me Game of Thrones vibes though. Yeah, so I, I enjoy the Lord of the Rings movies. I never watched them all the way through until I was an adult. Yeah. Uh, when I was little, I never I never finished them. Um, but I like those movies. This looks like it's a prequel. As far as I can tell, it's supposed to be like the creation of the rings. Yeah. So that's really cool. But also, on that same note, and I kind of agree with you, in like Game of Thrones sort of maybe slightly paving the way for some of these things to come back. Yeah, like, like you said. It made it because, cool again to go into that timeline, that time period where that medieval kind of vibe. Well, did you see the Dungeons and Dragons movie? Yeah, I saw there's a, a whole thing for that yeah. as well, which and is so really cool. I, I, it's really cool, but I, I thought it was interesting as I was watching these trailers. I saw like House of the Dragon and then Lord of the Rings and then Dungeons and Dragons. I was like, these are the same. These are the same three movies. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't know. I don't know how to put it into words, but basically it just seems like a lot of the same type of content or at least in the same period. Like yeah, all, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, they have different tones. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's it's a similar period. I think. Yes, yeah. similar vibe. So I will be interested to see because one thing about 
Game of Thrones is that what it did that no other show really has is the things that they show were mm. some of them were just rated X. Like Game mm-hmm. of Thrones has is it's past rated R. I think that when you start killing pregnant women by stabbing them in the stomach while they're like seven months is crazy. Like that is that is fucking That's insane. Game of Thrones sh- like Game of Thrones has rape. It has a lot like trigger warning, but like it it's really bad. Like Game of Thrones has a lot of crazy shit, and Lord of the Rings has never been that. So I'm wondering, is Lord of the Rings going to stick to like their PG-13 script or are they going to get darker? Like, are they going to get, I just don't see anything being as dark because when House of Dragon comes out in three weeks, like House of Dragon comes out in three weeks, Kenny, when that shit comes out, you know, episode one is going to be dark as fuck. Like they're, they're going to hit us immediately. I mean, the Targaryens are the rulers. It's going to be incest. Obviously it's just going to be everything. It's going to be everything that made Game of Thrones. (laughs) Every time we talk about Game of Thrones, I bring up the incest, but that's a key part of it. You cannot not bring up the incest because like, they're, well, this is the this is the actual dynasty that incest yeah, yeah, came yeah. from. This, they started this is it. The incest dynasty. This is the incest dynasty, and so that's it's going to be a big part of it. But like again, I think Game of Thrones is rated X version of medieval times, and Lord of the Rings is going to be the PG thirteen. I don't know what Dungeons and Dragons is going to be giving. I have no idea, uh, but I'm just excited it, for that it because. Looks like- it looked like a. Fu- I don't think it's gonna be rated R. It looked like a PG. Like from the trailer, it looked like a fun little. Yes, you know, Ready Player romp. One vibes. Yeah, so I don't know if you ever saw that, but it was. That'll be cool. I haven't seen it, but I've I've heard of it. Yeah. The trailer. So um, we can definitely when Dungeons and Dragons comes out, me, you, and Anthony will obviously hop on a podcast and do a review for that yeah, because you yeah, guys yeah, actually yeah. play D and D. Uh, so that will be fun. I don't know if you guys been playing D and D lately though. We were playing up until I started working at the bar. Yeah. And then we had to put it on hold because I, I work on the days that we usually play. Yeah. Um, but at some point, especially when the summer ends uh, and my shifts change, we'll, we're going to probably figure something out and do more D&D. Okay. Um, but yeah, so those little movies. And then there's... Okay, so I didn't know a season one of this existed. Chucky season two Yo, is coming out. I saw that as well, and I didn't know what season one existed either. Mind you, Chucky is one of my favorite things from when I was a child. I love Chucky. I love the horror genre in general, even though it's cringe now. But I still really, really like Chucky. I didn't even know there was a season one, but I want to watch it. Yeah, same. I, I'm watching this, and it's like Chucky season two, and I'm si- I'm like, when the fuck did season? Where's season one at? Yeah. So I I don't know when Chucky would have had a season one but apparently that's a thing i don't know and then there's a couple other things but i'm not the 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 last thing i really want to touch on from comic-con uh other than some other stuff we talk about monster hunter enough but there was monster hunter stuff at comic-con as well they just showed lucid narcacuca but the last thing i want to say is they announced the final season of the walking dead and let me just tell you i did not know the show was still on shit that show is still on did not know that show was still on. There's a fucking trailer for The Walking Dead, the final season. And I was watching it the whole time like, I thought this shit was over. Where, where the Me fuck too. did this come from? So there's a final season of The Walking Dead, and apparently they're stormtroopers. Because uh, there's a bunch of people running around in straight stormtrooper gear. And Yo, that show went so south. I don't even know where it's at anymore. I have no idea. I know that all of the main cast is gone. Like, Rick is no longer in the show. I'm not sure if Michonne is still in the show. Um, I know that Rick's son, Carl, I think he got killed. Uh, yeah, that, that show, you want to talk about crashed and burned? Yeah, it's nonsense. I think they still have that one guy. I don't remember his name. You see that? You see that? That one sure. guy. There you go. But I think they still have that one guy. It's the guy that they used for Death Stranding or whatever the fuck that game's called. Uh-huh. I don't know. But, yeah... You know, for you walking debtors out there, you know, final season. That's all right. Well, that's into that. Let us transition over to our Patreon and our listener letters. So, uh, before we go any further, I just want to say that we just dropped our July 2022 exclusive episode on Patreon.com. You can find us by typing in I'm Their Podcast on Patreon. And we have four different tiers, mainly three tiers, but you can get access to the I'm Their Podcast Discord. You can get access to exclusive episodes that only drop on there uh, and other benefits that you can check out. So check check that out, guys, and let us know what you think and join it if you are down to support us. Uh, you know, it's 
it's one of those things that we've been doing actually since we first started and we've gotten a lot of support which i'm so surprised about like at one point we literally have 40 people on our patreon i think it's 37 right now so that's really fucking amazing and i appreciate every single one of you that has ever subscribed to us on patreon for any amount of time uh, it really goes a long way and for the people who have been rocking with us for several months some of them since the very beginning uh huge shout out to you guys as well but i just want to give a personal shout out to everyone as i always do each episode so we have uh connie austin leon quest garen xavier hylian tcg automotive silver chronic tyree tinsley dimitri barnes alexander Brissett, vinnie casello giovanni avelos alex flamer ari reynolds cj dub k dad one saw at dabbers gaming cafe also the owner of dank ritual where you can get nice cloth play mats and nice double deck boxes uh, Dennis Milburn, Joseph Marcello, Red Vines, First to Home, Dalis Fernares, Estad Akuma, Mitchell Nellis, Midwest Gaming, William Shapiro, Dimitri Safirdis, Fitz Marquette, Dallas Bailey, KJ, Biz, Roz Weiss, Nick Stango, Scott Polera, and our two-time national champion, Hansu Aguerrero. Thank you guys so much. And uh, yes, yeah, so I want to do some listener letters. We have three letters that have been sitting in the inbox for a little bit in the month of July. And there's never been a right time to kind of read them off that will go with the episodes that we had previously recorded this month. So I figure let's just do an episode, a general discussion like this one, and then we can actually address these. So the first one comes from Austin, sent back on July 9th. So this is around when uh, Sunbreak was like relatively new still. And he was talking about uh, charge blade users mostly. Uh, he said, I was definitely hyped for Sunbreak for sure. Unlocking a G rank slash master rank quest is usually when I really dive into it. I think the lower ranks did feel too easy, like you said kind of like generations to me probably why i didn't play either too much before g rank came out the way they can chase you in animation now almost feels like freedom unite hitboxes also most previous iterations over here uh the biggest ones at least came out with g rank already on it one thing i've noticed is that they do have a pretty decent balance of difficulty and quality of life changes like when world came out the fact that the skills didn't need a certain amount before they even activate just seemed absolutely broken to me however I don't care how easy they make farming, gathering items, not monsters, and I'm good with it. Um, what is it? However, I don't care how easy they make farming, gathering items, not monsters, and I'm good. Okay. And he also says, it's also really interesting to see the level of customization they're offering for the hunters too. Customize your skill loadout and have a second one you can switch into. Do you see that you can make layered armor with anything like GU? Yeah. So, I mean, we, Kenny and I have been playing a lot. Uh, both of us all are over master rank 100 and so we, we fought everything in the game that sunbreak has to offer so far before the title update we fought every single thing and i really love the, the this is the best monster in the game to me i think it's always the new game to me is always the best game uh just because of quality of life improvements those things i've played since the very first monster hunter and let me tell you it's come a long way between load screens when you get out of an area um, not being able to change your weapon on a quest, not being able to cook on a quest. If you die, your health and stamina just revert back to, to nothing unless you take a max potion or ancient potion, which is crazy when I think of like stuff like that when I think about it now is so bad. It is like artificial difficulty, not having a map. So the map is just, there's no map actually. You get dropped into a random area when the quest starts. There's a lot of hot drinks and cold drinks. They've done a lot to improve the game. I think also layered armor is one of the best things ever. That shit started a while ago. I think that was like a cross, double cross thing. But I love layered armor. Obviously, I'm a, I'm a huge fashion hunter. I'm basically a fashion hunter in real life. So I love the idea of changing my hunter to look cool. Like right now, I have this fucking thing called the harp crown. It's literally a crown. It makes me look like a king. But you get it from beating every quest in Master Rank. And I was and like, it's really cool. That that's, I didn't even know that was going to be a thing. I had no idea. And I was like, oh shit, I did every quest and now I got this new layered armor that is just a crown. It looks really fucking cool and I was streaming it yesterday. So I, I love the layered stuff. Uh, as far as difficulty goes, this game is hard. I said this when we first did our initial review of Sunbreak. It's a hard game and I love it. Like we fail quests now, not often, but we still can fail, especially so against some of the harder monsters. Uh, we all die a lot and that I just don't recall dying almost ever in Rise. Like I was a person that basically just didn't die ever and now now it's like i die multiple times a day and yeah. that's that's like really cool uh, granted a lot of times when i die i'm always surprised like sometimes it's like oh you know i fucked up there i did something but now when i die i'm genuinely shocked that either something hit me or that it did that much damage like yesterday i sharpened my sword 
And an explosion that was not even close to me fucking took 70% of my health. And I had already died. My moxie was already up and I didn't even know it. It's just crazy. That was so, so yeah, we were fighting. I'm not going to say who, because it's a spoiler, but we were fighting the last monster in the game. And, uh, I died twice. I got fucked on. And I was like, all right, I'm sorry. Okay. And then Fraser had cooked for moxie and then he ended up dying. We found the quest. And then he goes, wait a minute. I had moxie. Like, and then we we put it together. And he was like, "Cause it was streamed, so I got to quest, watch the stream." Yeah, at some point during this quest, I had already died, lost my moxie, died again. I just never knew that my moxie went away. So if people don't know, moxie is a skill you can eat for. So it's a dango skill, and it makes it where you get this little ticker on your health bar. And if your health is above that ticker, you can't get one hit KO'd. It'll just drop you to one HP. So it's very it's very helpful, especially against the more difficult fights. But I didn't know. That at some point during the fight, I died. And my moxie broke. I call it broke like a substitute in Pokemon. My, my moxie broke. And I had no idea. So when I went to sharpen at the end of the quest, I got hit by something that one, I, I didn't think I was going to hit by because I would have just rolled out of my sharpening. Like I wouldn't have even, I would have even been in that situation if I thought that it was going to hit me. So that's the first thing. I think the hit zones are already crazy in Sunbreak and I'm still, I'm still getting used to them. Like it's been out for a month now and I'm still not quite fully used to all the different hit zones that the monsters have or hit boxes. Uh, but yeah, the game is fun and it's fun to me because of how hard it is. And rise was fun because of just the wire bug mechanic in general makes rise fun, but not necessarily because I was challenged. I didn't feel challenged in rise until Valstrax came out and uh, all mother Narwa. And honestly, it got to a point where all mother Narwa was a joke because of the rapid fire pierce to light bow gun of Nar uh, Narcacuga. Once you learn her patterns, she just like, even right now in master rank, that monster, I know a lot of people have a problem with, with all mother Narwa. I basically do that fight without getting hit. Like it's under 10 minutes for me. If you see me solo it, it's an under 10 minute hunt. And it's like really easy now because of the light bow gun. And I don't know what people do when they don't have a gun, but like, it's such a funny thing to watch people run around. Cause like, she doesn't give you many opportunities to actually attack her like that. It's, it's just not a really yeah. well balanced fight, but obviously there's some fights where gunning Valstrax and master rank. I don't think gunning him is good. I, I actually feel terrible when I try to gun that monster because one, everything hit, hits you once and it kills you. So everything he does is an Oko. And then on top of that, uh, it seems like he was designed to kill gunners because all his moves are so long range. Like he sticks out at he one. Very long moves. Yes. I fought him with Medina and uh, we failed that quest um, because just like he just, he can fuck you up. Yo, Valstrax does not play around. Yeah, he's difficult. He's one of, so I consider him uh, the new, obviously the, the yeah, him, the, the Master Rank 100 monster. And All Mother and Narwa are like the three tough challenges of the game right now. And rightfully so, because you have to rank up to even fight them. R Furious Rajang is whatever, but the, the, the Master Rank 70 Valstrax and then the Master Rank 100, those fights are genuinely like challenging. And yeah. I, I like that. Like I, I still don't have the Valstrax fight down to a science. It's also because I haven't fought him that much. Like I farmed him enough to get two of his weapons. So I got two of the Two of his weapons and his armor. So I have two of his weapons and I have his armor because I use it for my charge blade because apparently Dragonheart is still broken as hell. So like I have a charge blade build. I have like a long sword build that I don't even use because almost nothing I fight is that weak to dragon. Thunder seems to be like the main. I swear I use my thunder weapons more than anything else, but that's just a different rant. But yeah, Sunbreak's been great. Sunbreak's been great. Um, What was I going to say? I was going to say something related to all that, but I don't remember what the Fuck it was. Yeah, because I went all over. I'm all over places usual. So there's. Um. Oh, I remember. I want Afflicted Furious Rajang. Okay. And one of the title updates, give me Afflicted Furious Rajang. Okay. Thanks. I think that'll happen. I could totally see that. I could totally see that. I, I actually like the idea that right now, there are no Afflicted monsters that are super crazy. Like Rathalos is not there. Is an ogre. Uh, the super ridiculous Astalos, who I think is absurd. Seregio, Steve. Yeah, uh, Gormagala, who's he just hits so hard that it, it baffles me how hard that monster hits me. Um, but there, there are no afflicted versions of those really tough monsters. Obviously, afflicted elder dragons, which I don't think will be in the first title update. I think that the afflicted elder dragons will be in the next title update. Yeah, they're gonna come later. Yeah, but I, I could see. I I, yeah, yeah, I don't imagine right away we're gonna get all the afflicted monsters like that. But yeah, it's there's a lot to do. I'm still making sets. I actually so they I noticed they give you 14 pages of equipment loadouts. And so on every page, I have a different weapon. And the only 
weapon that takes up two pages is light bow gun for me because I have every elemental light bow gun and I have also all the raw builds of it as well. So there's like pierce, there's spread and everything like that. And then there's also other niche bow guns like rapid fire slicing, which cuts tails off faster than anything in the game, stuff like that. So I have all of these different bow guns, but I have every long sword. I have every charge blade. I have uh, like my great sword and I have, yeah, I just have one great sword build really. Cause at this point I just use the best great sword. It's like, objectively still the best great sword unfortunately like you can use elemental ones if you want but at the end of the day like there's one that just does more damage than all the other ones so i still use i use the one great sword i have the one hammer there's objectively one hammer um and then like inside glaive i dabble in a little bit in this game and what else heavy bow gun i think that weapon's garbage in moss hunter rise and some break so i have like one build for it that i used to fight the last boss but then i found out that the light bow gun actually just does better solo than the heavy bow gun does just because like you can't dodge any of his attacks with a heavy bow gun so i i don't even really use the heavy bow gun anymore so i used it for like two days to farm the last boss and then i realized that the light bow gun can do it better the kizu light bow gun is crack so i just farm him with that now and i don't even use the heavy bow gun anymore uh Hi. but yeah so i use everything except there's like four weapons i don't use i don't use the lance or the gun lance yet i don't use dual blades and I, I'm just going to say, I, I really have no intention to use Heavy Bowgun again. Uh, maybe that'll change if something crazy comes out because Monster has this history of bringing out, like in World, in the middle of the game, out of nowhere, Heavy Bowgun just became the best weapon. And it just wasn't at first. It just became the best weapon out of nowhere. If they do that again, I'll use it again. But right now, I just don't see the incentive to over Light Bowgun. Light Bowgun's crack. But yeah, I basically... I want to get into Gun Lance. I think that's going to be like one of my, my products that I pick up soon. Uh, Gun Lance, I want to see what it's about. I heard it got really buffed. I love Switch Axe. Weapons fucking amazing in this game. Really fun. So good in this game. It is the, for me, Hammer and Switch Axe are most improved. And I love them both. I've been using them a lot. Uh, cause longsword has gotten like, you know, it's, it's longsword. It'll always be there. It's my main, but it's also gotten a bit boring just because I, I guess they just needs more switch skills they gave it a switch skill that howling moon thing that everyone freaked out about it's not even usable like it creates that domain expansion and if you counter a move it does extra hits it's not usable it literally doesn't even get used on speed runs anymore it's it's just not good and it's because it kind of reminds me of the great sword wire bug move that uh where you jump in the air and you cost two wire bugs and had a medium cooldown in, in the base game it's it has too big of a cost for too little result and it, the stipulations on it, you can't put your weapon away. If you if you run to the circle, you get knocked back into the circle. Um, Man, it's fucking weird. It's just not good. So they gave it a move that it literally can't use, which sucks. Basically, it's like the, the weapon got jipped out of a move. And so unless they, uh, unless they reprogram the move altogether, it will not be used really. And that, that just sucks to me. So the longsword, I like Sacred Sheaf. I like the fact that I can use Soccer Slash and Helm Splitter, even though Helm Splitter got nerfed really hard, 50%, literally 50% of its damage. Um, but yeah, it's still a really, really good weapon, still a fun weapon. But I found myself using like more of the other stuff more often. Like if you look at my guild card now, the other weapon's starting to slowly creep up over Longsword, which I'm not mad at. Yeah, I'm still, you know, mostly using Greatsword. I've messed a little bit with Longsword. I use Greatsword and Hammer the most. Um, I've been dabbling Longsword, Switch Axe, and Sword and Shield. Uh, but yeah, it's a lot of fun. I um I like the afflicted monsters have like a damage check. If you don't hurt them enough, they fucking explode. Yeah, cool. that's actually really cool. But uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what they're going to do. Um, Lucent Nargakuga looks cool, so we'll see. Yeah. All right. So next lesson I learned comes from Biz or the Biz. Uh, okay. So this is in regards to Stranger Things season four, volume two, and this one is long. So it says some pre letter notes. These are some thoughts I had on Will's character in this season. I haven't actually ever sent a listener letter in before, so I'm not actually sure this qualifies. If it does, and y'all do decide to read it in a future episode, I'll warn that it is a couple minutes to read out loud, and hopefully the formatting comes through okay. Even if not, I appreciate the podcast and will continue to integrate it into my listening rotation. So I, we appreciate you for that. Okay, so actual letter. I have zero issues with Will being gay, but having a crush on Mike being the way you explore both his character and being a gay dude in the 80s is misguided at best. The setup is actually really clean. Season 1, literally stranded and alone, could be retroactively read as a closet metaphor, but at this point in the story, it's simply clear he needs his friends more than anything. Seasons 2 and 3 
dealing with trauma and losing connections to his friends. Also, if you read into it too much, maybe the regurgitated upside down thing is an HIV slash AIDS signifier. Okay. Uh, and then he said, start of season four, basically stranded again without his friends, but this time with L who won't talk to him, a brother utterly failing to deal with his own shit. Like last episode, he literally asked Nancy, are we good? And then immediately lost her. What the fuck? And his mom doing her best, but ultimately very stressed with a lot on her plate, who, as far as Will knows, just dips to Alaska during the biggest reunion Will has been looking forward to, just as it's not living up to his expectations. I can believe that Mike and Will have a bunch of heart-to-heart -heart conversations over the courses of seasons four on the nature of relationships and dealing with the dirty stuff that comes along with it, but where Will is a more active participant in what he needs from friendships on a more raw, connective level, and how that can teach Mike about opening up to L while still expressing his apprehension towards connecting with other people because some of his only male role models are tough guys that bottle everything up what we get instead is a constantly rehashed with some questionable acting at times identical conversation that only moderately moves mike's character forward and leaves will internally screaming like his acting direction was to look like he's begging for a kiss in every scene with mike there's so much room for nuance here and instead they just go for crushing on the straight boy the final rant in the van was good though i i can give will that uh, imagine, he says, imagine you instead of frame every conversation Mike and Will have through a lens of Will just needs a friend. No, his fucking best friend to talk about being gay in a safe and accepting space and drop the entire crush stick. Hell, you can loop Jonathan in every once in a while to share his relationship issues and then have Argyle drop a soup, a soup on a nose, but reasonable take. And then boom, the road trip actually has a point beyond being a reason you wait until season five to make L literally fly you can even still keep the final rant in the van but have everyone clearly accept him at his most vulnerable state uh right there so he can finally cry and open and not have to hold it in instead the payoff for will being vulnerable here is his strange 11th hour realization jonathan has of oh yeah if i'm ruining my relationship with best girl under with best girl under the guise of being there for my family i should probably do that at least once this season this all could be explored still in season five, but to have the pen, uh, penultimate season act as a capstone on a character development you build in two and three for most of the gang. So you can focus more on exploring the mythos of the upside down and have an end without exploring one of the major interpersonal plot lines built in those seasons just feels gross. Side note, uh, after getting this typed, I saw an article where Will's actor confirms the character is gay and loves Mike. So I guess that's probably going to be the death of his storyline and before he ends up sacrificing himself to save will as an act of unrequited love too long didn't read the second worst subplot could have been the best and instead was a bad high school forensics duet getting told in every scene the characters are in also everyone go be a patreon member biz all right so last one pack there so you yeah your, your focus mainly here is they've been kind of dragging the entire uh viewership on you know will is obviously gay and at first it was something that people could argue against like, no, he's not gay. They're just, you're reading too much into it. But now it's blatant that he's gay, right? I think that season four, if you didn't know from any other season, because I didn't know until honestly now that it was really confirmed, but season four really confirmed it for me with just part one. And now part two was definite like, oh, okay, the character's gay. I, yep. d I don't, I don't mind though that he likes his straight friend or whatever, because at the end of the day, right? If you grow up around someone, you're around them all the time, naturally people start to just grow on you. And if you're heterosexual, then you're, you know, your male friend, your male, your male friend is not going to be of sexual desire to you. But if you are homosexual, your male friend could easily become desirable to you as you go through puberty, right? Because these kids start out, the show started out, they were like 10. They're really young. And then they start to develop. And they start to look at each other and also other students and stuff like that as like in a sexual way. So it's human, it's human nature. So obviously his friend being the same sex doesn't mean that he's off limits to him sexually when he looks around. Like it's just the human body has its own mind. And we all know that. And I think it's completely normal for especially a teenage, a teenage boy to, you know, uh, fawn over a friend. That's not, that's not like unheard of. It's actually very common. It's like the exact opposite. I was going to say on that exact note, um, I've, I've had quite a few groups of friends that have been fractured over relationships. Uh, in these instances, they weren't homosexual relationships, but there's been many situations where I've been in a group of friends, let's say 
the ratio is like eight to two, like male to female or yeah. seven to three male to female, mostly yeah. males and some females in the group. Uh, what ends up happening is you guys spend so much time together. You hang out all the time. You guys are really close friends, right? Eventually, one of the guys and one of the girls end up getting feelings for each other yep. and they start dating. And then like that, Things girl get weird. Up, that girl ends up cheating on them with another guy in the group. And then like that guy cheats on that girl with another girl. And, and like, oh, so do you get community? It, well, so so yeah. do you give community? <laughs> but like that happens a lot. That happened in one of my breakdance groups I was a part of. It happened in uh some Yu-Gi-Oh groups I was a part of. It happened in just like yeah. some fighting it's very groups common. I've been a part of. So it's super common. Like people getting crushes on their friends is very common. And that being the case for like somebody being homosexual, I don't like I don't see why that wouldn't be any less common there. Yeah, I think that? Yeah, I just think it's a very normal thing for heterosexual and homosexual people to eventually like their friends if they're attracted to that sex. Like, that can just happen to anyone. If you spend so much time with someone on a friend level, sometimes it starts to, the emotions start to seep out that you don't even know. Like, you meet people, this has happened to me, you literally can meet someone and not be attracted to them at all. Like, physically, you're like, this isn't my type, right? But if you hang around them too much, slowly but surely you start to like their personality yeah. and you start to then, find things attractive about them and that, they start to become cute you're like yes oh, like they start to just be kind of like somebody who you didn't think was cute all of a sudden they start doing little things and, and you, you start, start to like it you start really yeah so the way that it's happened to everyone i think yeah it's it's that's definitely a very human thing so i'm not mad at the show for that I think that the storyline of the gay guy with the uh, unrequited love from the straight friend, that storyline is obviously OU, it's overused, but it's also, unfortunately, a very real storyline. So I'm not mad at it. I don't really know what else his character would have done, but that's because I'm not really a show writer. So that's like a lazy excuse. Like, I won't even say, like, I don't know what else they could have done because they could have done other things. Of course, there's a million things you could do with a character. But like, in my head, as we're talking about this in this very moment, reading this letter, I don't know what else they could have done with his storyline because I just, I'm not that invested in just Will's character, if I'm being honest. Like, I, I like the cast as a whole, but no one character completely drives the show for me. So, yeah. I just, I'm just happy that, you know, it's the, it's the 80s, so things are, are a bit weird with the whole sex, sexuality thing, but the show is still pushing the boundary on a topic that was really taboo back then. Like, oh, for sure. Like, being gay was definitely way more taboo in the 80s. Now it's, you know, it's way more accepted and, you know, gay marriage is legal now, even though who, who knows for how long, but... Yeah, that's, that's fucking, you know... Yeah. But, but, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I, I know it sounds like you have problems with not only maybe the, the plot itself, the subplot itself, but also its execution. I, I feel as though the... Ex at least for me, the execution came across, like, pretty fine. Like, I don't think it was done... I think overall, season four, just it, in my personal opinion, was written quite well and quite enjoyable. It's, yeah. it's not fucking... It's not one flew over the cuckoo's nest. It's not the greatest piece of cinema written of all time. Yeah. But I did very much enjoy season four, and I think most of it was written well, minus maybe the Russia plot. Yeah, I didn't care for the Russia plot personally. I just I don't care for it, especially when they had to go back. But that's we talked about that in the Stranger Things podcast. So if you guys haven't heard that yet, go and check that out. Uh, there's two episodes for it. All right. Last listener letter comes from Vincent Zen, and it says response to your Pokemon Go addiction. Uh, the post that you made. So yeah, I, I I had a memory come up on Facebook. You know, Facebook likes to embarrass you. Facebook will literally show you a status that you wrote 10 years ago that was so fucking cringe and embarrassing and be like, do you want to share this again? And, and for me, every time it's like, click the delete button. However, <laughs> there was one from 2016 where I was addicted to Pokemon Go and I shared it. And I said, this game had me in a fucking chokehold. Okay, this game had me in a chokehold to the point where I didn't even play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore. I wasn't interested. This is also when I started to like quit Yu-Gi-Oh, honestly. So Pokemon Go was kind of like the addiction got so bad that I just stopped caring about Yu-Gi-Oh for Pokemon Go. Anyway, uh, he says, Frazier and Kenny's Love Advice Corner. Would you go as far as to say anything that occupies your mind like your Pokemon Go addiction did where you don't remember your life before it is toxic for you? Even falling in love slash falling for a girl for the first time, asking for a friend. So I see why you call this our love advice corner, Vincent. And you're basically saying if you fell for a girl or a guy and 
you literally forget your entire life. What you used to like, what you used to do before you met this person and fell in love with this person. Is that toxic? The answer to me is a resounding yes. I actually do not like anyone who gets with a person and they completely uproot their entire life that they had before it. Like they, they lose their identity. I think that is one of the saddest things to see. And it happens so often with groups of friends where like one of them will get a girlfriend or a boyfriend or they'll get engaged or something will happen. And it's either that the girlfriend or, or boyfriend doesn't like your friends and they kind of do this thing. I call it the isolationist demon. They become an isolationist demon and they literally start to isolate you from your friends. And they say things like, oh, don't watch Game of Thrones with them. Watch it with me or only watch it with me. Don't play this game with your friends. Play this game only with me. Don't do this with your friends. Do this only with me. And slowly but surely, the things that you used to commonly do with your friends or the life you used to leave before you met this person, they just slowly take those things away. And you do everything with them to the point where now your whole life is, revolves around that person. And when that person leaves you or if anything goes wrong with that relationship, you're fucking shattered and you're just like, nothing anymore because you lost who you were. I, I hate it. I It's actually one of my biggest pet peeves and I try my hardest not to speak on it when I notice it, but it is so fucking cringe. And it's happened around me because it's never happened to me, but it's happened around me so many times where it's like, oh yeah, we can't play tonight. I got to play with my girlfriend or I have to go do this with my girlfriend or I can't do this because of like, oh, she's going to bitch if I like, I have to get off right now. Oh, I can't, I can't, play the game until this this hour anymore it's just i hate it like it's so it's so bad it's so if, if you're asking if it's toxic it's very toxic actually i think that your spouse should have their own life outside of you and you should have your own life outside of your spouse and obviously you guys have your life together that is also very important but for them to tr try to essentially make the, your entire world revolve around them that's a toxic thing and that shit never works out i've not seen a single relationship work out where you have to cut off your friends or not do activities with your friends as much because you're in a relationship. That's just weird. Like that's fucking weird. And it doesn't work. That's my take yeah, on it. So, I mean, I pretty much agree with Fraser. I think that, uh, if you completely obsess over someone or obsess over something like that, it, it can be very toxic. Um, especially if it starts to hinder not only your relationship with other people, but if it starts to hinder your life. Like if you start, fucking not going to work because like yeah. your girl didn't call you back or something. You know what I mean? Like if, if some, if the, like if your girl or your guy doesn't answer your phone call for a day and like it throws you into such upheaval that like you don't go to work or, you know what I mean? Like stuff like that. Yeah. Or when and, you're around your friends, right? Like your whole demeanor is you're in a bad mood. You're bringing really negative energy because you had a fight. Like at that point, don't bring that shit around your friends because that's just unfair to us. Honestly, I hate when people do that yeah. too. That's a, that's a different topic, but yeah, I think I, I agree with Kenny. What Kenny's saying like, go ahead. I, I, uh, I, I remember one time I had a very close friend. Um, I used to hang out with him a lot. I played smash with him a lot and we would go to his house. Sometimes this was one of my, actually, I won't give any more specifics, but we would go to his <laughs> house sometimes and we would, uh, we would play smash and it was cool. One day, we go to his house. First of all, he got married, and, like, I didn't even know he got married, which I was kind of salty about, because, like, I wasn't even invited to his wedding. Like, yeah, that's fucked. And he, and he had, like, a... It's not like... If he just got married, he, like, he went down to the courthouse, I wouldn't care, obviously. But I ended up seeing pictures of his... Like, he had, like, a big-ass wedding, and I didn't even know about it. So, anyway, he gets married. I was like, man, that's kind of fucked up. I didn't even know about this. But, anyway, we go over his house one day to play Smash, like we usually do. And we usually would be there till like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., playing Smash. And then I'm there this one time, and it's like 11 o'clock. And his wife comes down the steps, and she's like walking around, and she's huffing and puffing. Oh, God. She goes into the one room. She goes back, and she huff and puffs. And she like calls him upstairs a couple times. And then eventually it's like 11.30 or whatever, and he basically says, like, we have to leave. And, you know, we have to leave because his wife wants him to come to bed or something. Like, yep. just nonsense. And it's I've like, been in situations like that, too. It's like, dude, what the fuck? Tell her, tell her to go to sleep. Like, just tell her to go to sleep. Like, you don't have work tomorrow. Like, you don't have anything you have to do tomorrow. Like, yeah, like you want me to come to bed to just literally to come to bed and not be with my friends, which is so ridiculous and selfish. And, you know, it's hard for people to break out of those types of uh, situations. I understand that. It's not, it's not as easy on the outside or it's not as easy on the inside, you know, when you're in it with that person because you love that person. You want, you want them to feel happy at all times, but sometimes that happiness comes at the sacrifice of your personal life. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it, it can be. It's unhealthy. It's frustrating. The key word is that it's very unhealthy, and you should honestly identify that shit as soon as you notice it, and have a conversation with your your significant other if if this is becoming a problem. Where it's like, well, you you're noticing that you're losing who you used to be before you met them. Because that shouldn't be yeah. a relationship should not make you lose yourself. It should be enhancing who you are. It should not be making you completely lose the person you were. Like, for example, I love Monster Hunter. I love anime. I love Game of Thrones. Uh, I love I love going out to the movies with my friends. That's why I have the AMC pass. I love going out to eat with my friends. Right. These are all things that I would like to continue to do for the rest of my life. They make me happy. And I think that they will always make me happy, which is why I do them. If I were to get in a relationship and all of a sudden I'm not allowed to like go to brunch with my friends anymore or go to a movie like instead i have to always do it with them like oh don't go see nope without me like that that just become that's kind of toxic it's like what well, like i sure i'll go see nope with you or you can come along with us but to be like oh i have to go see it with you and and basically they're not supposed to be there though like this is supposed to be our time now you're now making it where game of thrones a show that i watch every sunday with my friends and have and talk about with my friends i have to wait for you to watch it and I can't watch without you. And it's just like a whole thing. I, I just, I've experienced so much of that nonsense yeah, and I hate it. Have like a, like, it's cool to obviously right? If you're starting a relationship with somebody, it's cool to create space for that. Like, obviously you're going to have less time. Yes. You, friends, you right? have to obviously but, put a time into your relationship that, you know, I'm not saying don't do that. You like, have to work on it. Yeah. You, you just, you keep like, for example, um, I don't know. I can't. I'm can't think of any good examples because most of the shows that I've that I synced with a lot of my friends have either ended or refinished. Yeah. So, but okay. Like for example, uh, let's say like Hunter Hunter. I and uh, many other anime. There's a lot like Hunter Hunter. I watched on my own for when it first came out, but I ended up showing it to like my friend Medina. I showed it to my friend Cheyenne, and there was a bunch of times where like. I would spend an entire weekend just hanging out with them and watching Hunter Hunter with yeah. them, right? You and love like, that. That is a Kenny special. Kenny will love watching his friends go through right. something, even playing a game again that he's already beaten and everything. He'll, he yeah. loves to see them play through it or watch it. That's the thing. I, it's so fucking fun. So I love doing that and I love to keep doing that. And you can, I love doing stuff like that with my girlfriend as well. But it's like, you can't completely shut off doing it with Frasier or doing it with Yeah, like if you never like imagine you're like I only play Monster Hunter with my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah, like that would be can't... that would be fucking strange. And I'd be like, what the hell? Like this is something that we used to do a lot. Like last year when Rise came out, let's say, and it's like, yeah, we don't we can't play now because I have to wait for her to get on. Like I cannot play with you. I literally cannot. Yeah, no. And, I'm, yeah. and, and that sounds extreme. And people might think, like, who the fuck does that? I swear to you guys. That happens. That happens. I swear to you guys, there are relationships out there where the person, they might not say it, but you can actually, like, if you're perceptive at all, right? Like, I'm very perceptive. So if, you, if, you, if you're perceptive, you will start to notice that, like, they're dodging, like, oh, like, why are you not doing this anymore? You used to go to locals. Now you just don't go to locals ever. Like, it's just stuff like that. Like, this has happened to me actually very recently. It's like, Yo, like you don't even come to play cards anymore. You don't, you don't fucking do anything. You actually just don't do anything anymore with us. You only hang with her, and that is fucking toxic. It's cringe. And then every time yeah. you're mad with her, then you want to talk to us about it. You complain to us about it, like, oh, this happened, this happened. I don't want to hear that shit. I actually uh, don't care. Like, leave that. Don't just bring I me think, the bad. Like, fuck all that. I think that's also really important. I um, I really there's like obviously I don't know. I really need people to stop. How to? I don't know. It, it, basically, what Fraser said, like it, it's frustrating when like you hang out with somebody often, and then there's a difference between hanging out with them less because they have a girlfriend and hanging out with them never. And so sometimes you end up never hanging out with somebody because they have a girlfriend, and then you only see them when they're having a fight. Yep. And like, bro, guess what, what this bitch did? Guess what this bitch did? Like, and it's like, okay, here we go. Yeah. So. I was thinking anyway, of experience, obviously. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, that, that is toxic. Uh, honest, open and honest communication in relationships, real as cheesy and cringy as it may sound, is really some of the most important shit. Like, and it, it has to happen quick. A big problem with a lot of relationships is that they start off with two people fronting. Like, you, a lot of relationships start off with, like, 
you trying to flirt or impress somebody and them trying to do it to you. And then, you know, you guys aren't just open and honest with like, hey, I, I want to watch DBZ and jerk off on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, it's a whole thing. I, we, I think everyone, especially around my age, has had a friend. And you know that friend that when they get in a relationship, they go ghost. Like they're around you when they're single. They're around the group when they're single. They're always around. Everything's great. Even though you do notice that even when they're in the groups, they're constantly on dating apps. They're constantly like involved, trying to trying to get in a relationship, basically. Like they they can't exist yeah. single. And that's another topic too. That's a toxic way to be, I feel like, where you just can't be by yourself. I think that is terrible, but we can talk about that another time. But you we all have that friend or know that guy. That when they are in a relationship, they disappear on the group. And it's just happened to me so many times that I'm like, yo, that is that shit's corny. And now that I'm older and like I understand a lot more of the psychology behind it, like the isolation aspect of it, how some people just like to isolate you from your friends and from the things that make you happy so that that way your happiness is tied to just them. That shit is toxic. So if somebody's doing that to you, identify it and get as far away from it as you can if the person doesn't change. Because no one should yeah, try to make... Yeah, definitely have a conversation because here's the th they might not even really realize that's what they're doing. Yeah, some people are toxic without realizing it. That's for sure a thing. Yeah, so you can talk to them. But then, like, if nothing changes, then unfortunately, you might yeah. have to, you know. Yeah. All right. Well, that wraps up this episode of the Iron Man podcast. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to write in and have us read out any listener letters like we just did, you can write into I'm their podcast at Gmail dot com. Uh, we will read it aloud on the show. You can also send it to us. If you're in the Discord, you can just message it to me. Um, if you have me on Facebook Messenger, you can send it that way. Pretty much any way that you want to send it. If you're on Patreon, uh, you can send them that way as well. Any form of communication that goes to Kenny or not or I, you can send a listener letter to, and we will read it aloud on the show. And it could be about anything. As This is the first time I think that we really read a letter that was about relationship advice, kind of. like It was like the Pokemon Go and my addiction to that, yeah, but it was yeah. really about... Like falling in love, like Vincent said, falling in love or falling for a girl for the first time. And he said asking for a friend, which we all know what that means. Um, but that was fun to discuss because it's something that it's real. Like this is just a human thing that happens and it happens to a lot of people. It's not uncommon. I like discussing things that are that happen to real people. Like that's just the thing that happens to real people. Yeah, so I can say like, yeah, to, to link it back to like the nerd stuff and not necessarily relationships. I remember Cause like, and this is pretty toxic back when this is like 2017 or 2018, whenever super Mario Odyssey came out. Okay. Super Mario Odyssey came out on the switch. I was going out for, so I was working at a restaurant at the time and after work at like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, I would always go for a run. I was going out for a run every single night. I was going out for a run after work. One night Mario Odyssey came out and it came out at midnight. So I skipped my run for the night to go to GameStop to get Mario Odyssey and then I never ran again. Like, I didn't run again for, like, two years. <laughs> like, 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 I got Mario Odyssey <laughs> that night. I played it for, like, however many weeks straight. And then, like, I just never ran again yeah. for, like, two years. And, like, obviously that's pretty toxic and not healthy. Yeah, I mean, I've had games, definitely. I've, I obsess over them. But I guess this is just how I am. I never let a game completely stop me from doing the things I like. For example... I still go to AU on Thursdays to play Edison format, even though Monster Hunter came out. And I, before Monster Hunter came out, I was like, oh, I'm going to lose my life to this. I'm not going to be doing anything but playing Monster Hunter. But I still saw Nope. I saw Thor Love and Thunder. I have been literally leaving the house to go out to eat. I went to New York on Saturday for the whole day. I literally didn't play Monster Hunter a single time on Saturday, this past Saturday. So I've been, even though I obsess over these games and I still play a ton of hours, as you can see by like one looking at my actual hours and also looking at my master rank and stuff. Like I played a game a lot. But I just do it in a way where it doesn't impact my social stuff. Yeah, because, yeah. like, I don't want to lose... Like, if I just stop going to AU because Monster came out, like, I feel like that's just not... Like, that's yeah. not who I am. Like, I like going to AU. That's a part of... That's something that I really love doing. I love seeing my friends. I love going to a shitty restaurant after, like, Applebee's or whatever. That's just a part of my week. So I look forward to that before Monster came out. And even if I got in a relationship, I'm still going to find time to do those things. And if my significant other wants to follow me and you want to come to me come with me to locals that's fine like you can come and see what it's like i've noticed that a lot of my friends when they get in relationships the duelist friends anyway uh their girlfriends don't believe them about where they are when they're playing cards because they don't they just can't fathom okay. that there's a place where a bunch of guys gather there are no women 
a bunch of guys gather and just play cards and talk shit all day and that's literally all we yeah, do yeah, yeah. it's the most innocent thing ever but they don't believe it so they you always They're get like, that nah, you out eating. you always get that one girl that decides to show up one they always show up once it was the funniest thing they show up one time to the locals they sit in the back they don't talk to anyone they're really quiet pretty antisocial. not because they're an antisocial person because they're kind of shy it's a room full of guys and you know it's it can be kind of weird because a lot of the guys in the UK community are fucking weird let's be real but they they sit in the back of the locals they have no fun whatsoever they don't enjoy themselves they do observe the fact that their boyfriend is literally doing exactly what he said he's playing cards with his friends and talking shit that's literally all he's doing there are no women that come in at all except the ones that have small children and usually those are like cougars or whatever and they're not even looking at us so after that initial time coming to the local and finding out like, oh, he's actually honestly just playing fucking Yu-Gi-Oh cards all day. They never come back again because that shit's super boring. I think that is yeah. hilarious. Every time I see it, I see it twice a year at minimum. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's great. It's great. That is fucking but yeah, as I always say, guys, do the things that make you happy. I hope you enjoyed this episode and we will be back for more. And just make sure the things that make you happy aren't toxic and make you stop working out for two years like I did. Hey, I've stopped working out several times, so fuck all that. <laughs> <laughs>